Hello, my name is Robert Marquez, and today I'm going to cover a model view presenter, sometimes known as MVP, and this is based on an example implementation for a demo app built in WinForms. This video is the first in a series of several. The first one is an overview, so let's get started on that. Here you'll see the common MVP diagram if you look up the words for model view presenter. And uh, so you can't really tell much about what's going on here just on the surface other than there than there's some type of interaction. So I went forward and expanded on this with a little more detail. So here's how MVP was implemented in the demo application that was put together. We're going to begin first with the model. And the model provides a conceptual object representation for the business domain. So for example, if you want to represent, if you have a, a business domain and it involves employees and a department, well then, for example, an employee would be a model. And these models would have properties such as for an employee, a first name, last name, perhaps a uh, salary. And for department, similar, there'd be a department name, a phone number, perhaps a charge account. These are all properties that make up the, uh, the composition of a model. And the models also have the ability to define uh, some level of validations. So what makes a valid name, a valid charge account. These things we would expect the model to know how to validate and know what's a, a valid rules for these models. Uh, as an, and as I mentioned, uh, okay, there are rules, there's data. We've covered some of the data. Models in the demo app are unaware of any other parts. So for example, here we have a, do, a, a model, and uh, but it is not aware of what's going on with a service, a presenter, or a view. It's pretty much isolated. However, there are other parts of the system that do use the model quite a bit. For example, the services layer, it will make instances of the model and, and work with it. Um, but uh, the model itself doesn't really know about any of the other parts of the system. Moving forward now on to services. Uh, services have access to and from the repository. So the repository is our area that talks to a database. And uh, so the services has things described in a more general sense, a higher level, for example, get employee by ID or get a list of employees, get a list of departments. These commands or queries are rather general, but the actual mechanics of how it's to be taken from a database is defined in a repository. So uh, the repository would be the one actually getting down into the nitty gritty to talk to the database. Uh, what else we've got here? So we've got uh, access to and from, generally what, there's basically one service for each model. So, for example, if I have a department model, then I'm going to have a department service. If I have an a employee model, there'll be an employee service. Because each of these models, there's going to be a need typically to get things from the repository. And we don't have the model doing that, we'll have the service doing that. services transform model data. All right, so information coming from the repository, when we ask for something like an employee, the repository is going to bring back a fully defined employee, all its properties back. The service, however, may trim that down or as, as what we would call transform the data because the requester may not need all that data. But in a case in point, a view might uh, ask for, a, a view might be involved in building a pick list that only needs to show an employee name and its department, just those two fields. And so yet the employee represented in the database may contain 20 or 30 fields. When the repository brings back the employee data to the service, it would be the service that trims down all the access and builds it to just what the request wants. It's just two fields and that's all that's going to go back up the pipe here. Services help offload code from the presenter. So another uh, one of the benefits of having the services layer here is that it takes a lot of code off from the presenter. If we didn't have the services portion here, you'd start to have your presenter grow. By moving the code off into the services area, you can, you can keep the presenter more on the lean side and not get it too cluttered up with a lot of code. So that helps offload code when you have the services layer here. 
Now, the services are unaware, or actually, they are aware of models and repositories. They work with these two. Obviously, the repository, it has to work with it so it knows about it. And as far as the model, if it's going to be building alternate representations of the model data for a request, then it has to know about the model as well. But it doesn't know about the presenter or the view. Moving forward onto the repository. So I've already talked a little bit about the repository. It contains the nitty-gritty uh, code that talks to a database. So if it's talking to Entity Framework or ADO.NET, you would find those database .NET calls here in this repository, not in the services area. It performs the typical CRUD operations, the create, read, update, the, the delete operations. Those are, are defined in here. And uh, as I said earlier, when I was talking about the services, it returns full representations of the objects that's being asked of it. On to the database. So the demo in this case used an SQL IT database. It uh, could have been any other database, but for this demo, we simply used an SQL IT database. And it's just responding to requests from the repository. None of the other parts of this model view presenter system talk to the database. It's all coming through this repository, and the repository is only getting instructions from the services. So database is just dealing with this, the repository. The presenter. The presenter, there's one presenter for every view. Now, I'll just jump the gun a little here. A view is a user interface, or so for every user interface, there is a presenter. The presenter's busy in orchestrating what's going on in the overall system, for example. And it's also very much aware of what's going on, for, ex in, for example, in the view. When a user pushes a button or uh, selects something uh, like a menu option, those activities that the system needs to take action on, the view does not take action on it. It's raising events that the presenter is listening to, and then the presenter is the one that makes the decision on what should be done on those events. So if a user pushes a button to get employee data, it's the presenter that decides to ask for employee data from the services. And when it finally comes back, comes back to the presenter, the presenter brings it back to the view. The view doesn't know how uh, the employee was built or, or put together. It's just getting data and being told to display it. But the presenter is the one involved in orchestrating that type of request and other requests in the system. The presenter is aware of the view and the model and the services, so it has a bigger eye on everything overall. Also, this presenter may launch other views with their own presenter. So interesting to keep in mind. The view provides the front end, as we talked about. This is your user interface. So your windows, which contain buttons and data grids, those are all defined here in the view. And the, the purpose of the views are to represent model data. So if I want to view an employee, the representation of an employee, it will come here in the view. And now the view is pretty much ignorant of everything else in the system. It doesn't know about a presenter or services or a model, any of this parts here. It's standing out on its own. Now, there are some systems where people have built the view with a reference to a presenter, and it'll actually invoke calls in the presenter. That was not done in this case. That was not necessary. As I said, the presenter subscribes to events in the view, so the things that are happening in the view, the presenter is aware of, and the presenter is in charge of deciding what needs to be done, not the view. All the view is doing is displaying data. It doesn't know how to get the data, but when users click, as I said earlier, on buttons or make menu options, the presenter is aware of these activities, and it will go do the work and actually tell the view, here's here's a data bound list. Put it into a go ahead and display it, and the view will then put it into a, something like a data grid. Here's a picture of a uh, Visual Studio solution that shows. The how, how it was implemented, this uh, model view presenter application. So we can see that there's a domain layer which contains the models. And for the models, that's where each one will be listed. For example, a department. We also have an infrastructure layer. That's where our data access 
uh, layer is. And under data access is where we have the repositories. And I'm using a specific repository here. There's actually a repository for the department. So in this example, there's a repository for each model. It could be done another way through a more generic uh, repository, but this is a specific type. There's also a layer for the presentation layer. That's where the presenters and views are. They are both in the same project or same layer. And then there's the services layer, which as you can see, there appears to be, it actually is, one service for each model. So there's a department model. There's also then a department service. All the serv services needed to manage the department model are under the department uh, folder. So this kind of gives you an idea of how it was implemented. Here's a summary list of some resources you may want to look at if you want to get more information about Model View Presenter. And uh, some of these say retired content. Um, I've noticed there's quite a few Microsoft uh, locations on the net that show retired, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Is but that's just the way it is. Even the, the books published, for example, I found on Amazon. There weren't very many current ones. I found one for 2009 that talked about Model View Presenter, but not much else. And this is Model View Presenter in regards to working with .NET. There were quite a few others I saw dealing with other technologies, maybe like Java, but for .NET, I, there were not too many available, but here's some you can check out. You might want to also check out these websites here, the Stack Overflow and Code Project. Lots of articles there talking about this. Many people making use of this pattern. Of course, with these kind of sites, you're going to find <clears throat> um, opinions that vary, some that contradict one another. So you'll have to spend some time researching and reading a lot of these things and then basically adding up everything <clears throat> to what might work for you. Uh, because as I said, you can't go by just one article. You're going to have to look at many different ones and then weigh the the plus and minus of each approach to see what works best for you. <clears throat> so that's it. That concludes our overview and the overview, overview part for this um, series on the Model View Presenter. There will be some others. The next one will be on setting up the SQLite database. And then after that will be the... Uh, Visual Studio uh, video, which shows us begin to build this implementation. So thank you for watching. Hope you watch again.